My wife, Evangelist Linda Richardson, and myself, we want to welcome you to GPS, God's Positioning System. God has a word for you. Hello and welcome to GPS, God's Positioning System. And today, God has a word for you. But we have a special treat. The word today will be coming from my lovely wife, and the First Lady of Lighthouse, Evangelist Linda Richardson. Come on, wife, and bring the word of the Lord. Hey, family. Evangelist Linda Richardson here today with a message from the Lord. I'm so excited about this message that I am just happy about it. And I just am very happy that the Lord has giving me these words to bring to you today. And for the title of this message, it is Undivided Loyalty. And I'm going to read some scriptures to you today that's going to help us unpack what undivided loyalty means, what is going on, what is happening. And those scriptures are going to be found in First Chronicle, uh, chapter 10, 11, and 12. Now, we're not going to read all of that. But I'm going to pick out some scriptures from those uh, chapters to read to you today to help us bring our story together about what does it mean to be undivided. First, I want to read uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. So Saul died of his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Now, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Saul has died, and the scripture tells me that he has died because he transgressed against the Lord. It's just black and white, simple as that. And I know sometimes we think that we don't, uh, that the Lord will not, put some things on us, but my scripture, this scripture that I just read tells us something different. That Saul died because he transgressed against the Lord and that he asked counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. So now this is just the opening of our story and what's going on. Saul is dead. So now I want to uh, switch over to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 23. And it reads as thus. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready, armed to the war, and came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. Man, when I think about that, these numbers of bands, they came with David to help turn this kingdom over to David based on what the Lord had said, based on an assignment. But now I want to take us to verse 33, which is my focus scripture, 12 and 33, and it reads, Of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000 which could keep rank, they were not of double heart. And when I read from the New International Version, it read that these men were undivided loyal. Undivided loyalty unto David. There is some critical things happening right now. The kingdom is being turned over to a different type of king. And... These men have come to help David to make sure that this assignment is executed according to the word of the Lord. 
And when I look back in those scriptures and I read those scriptures, I counted all the men that came to David's side. It was 340,822. That was outside of those that had come prior to uh, uh, Saul uh, dying. Prior to Saul dying, telling David that we want you as our king. We want you as our king. They were living in a, in a divided society. They were living in a divided time. Saul was one type of king, David was another type of king, but now the people now have started to rally with David, saying, no, this is going to happen no matter, what, no matter what we have to do, no matter if we have to die, we are going to make sure that this assignment is carried out. Because these 340,000 men, if you read the scripture, were skilled. They were skilled in war. They were skilled with instruments. They were skilled with tools. They were skilled to make sure that this was going to take place at all costs. And even at the cost of their own lives. Undivided loyalty. They were loyal to the cause. Loyal to the cause. And I just want to back up just a little bit for just to kind of explain to you that First Chronicles is a history book. This book is telling us about the history of the Israelites and what happened to the kingdom, what happened to David, what happened to Saul. So I just want us to understand that just for, just for a brief second. 10 ends with Saul's death. 11 and 12 talk about David's kingdom, David taking over, the men coming to help David, and in war trying to make sure that all of this was going to happen. But now my focus scripture was 33, where it talked about of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war. 50,000. Now just from the tribe of Zebulon, there was 50,000 men. 50,000 men, which could keep rank. They were not of double heart, meaning they were not divided. They were with one mind, one cause. And when I think about today, when I think about where we are in 2021 and how divided our society is, I think about these men and how they have one mind. I think about the things that have divided us. We have so many things that have divided us. We have Black Lives Matter. We have Blue Lives Matter. We have women's rights. We have this right. We have that right. Whoever would have thought that the African Americans and the Asian Americans would have been marching together for rights in 2021. That's happening today. We are divided by political stance. We're divided by um, religious stance. And that religious stance is a a big, big factor. I was thinking about, and actually talking to one of my friends about Facebook and broadcasting live on Facebook. Now, I'm not trying to indict anybody. I thank the Lord that we have that medium that we can use, that we can broadcast, because when COVID-19 hit, churches closed down, and we had to find a way to get the word out. We had to find a way to get the word out. So, of course, I am not indicting anybody. But when you go on Facebook, you can listen to 10 churches all on one Sunday morning. <laughs> Whose message you going to listen to? Whose message are we going to listen to? I have to put myself in there because sometimes I'm scrolling Facebook too, looking and see who's preaching. I, so I'm, I'm not trying to indict anybody. I'm just telling you what's out there and what we have to be careful of. But I want to go back to being undivided. When I looked up the word undivided, it meant deliberate. It means not divided or separated. It means not broken into parts. It means to concentrate on one project. That's what undivided means. To be deliberate in your execution, be, to be deliberate about what you're thinking, to be deliberate about where you're going, to even be deliberate about where you're heading. Deliberate, undivided. 
We have plenty of reasons why we can be divided. <laughs> plenty of reasons. But when I look back at the scriptures, when I look, at, look back at the kingdom, when I look at the amount of men that had come to David's side, those that were willing to die for the cause, I think about my own life. I think about where I'm at. I think about what I'm doing. I think about how I'm thinking. I'm thinking about what I'm saying. Even to the words of what I'm saying, I think about it. Because one word can divide us. One word can divide us. I think about uh, uh, families and children being divided. As a matter of fact, we, we can read the newspaper today. Well, we got all these kids coming across the Mexico border into Texas that have been divided from their families, from their moms and dads. We got plenty of things to be divided for. But what are we going to stand for? These men were ready to risk their lives. Are we ready to risk our life for a cause? Are we ready to get out there and, and take our skills that we've worked hard for to use them for a cause? Are we ready for that? Are we ready to put our life on the line? Are we ready to do that? Are, are we divided? Are, are we divided? For, uh, James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When we don't stand for something, we're going to fall for anything. We're going to fall for anything. We have to be ready. We have to be willing. We have to be ready to go with the cause. And today, I want to talk about the cause of Jesus Christ. we got to be ready to put our life on the line for the cause of Jesus. For the word of God, we got to be ready to give up. Be ready to stand against what's going to come and what's not going to come. What we going to do, what we going to say, how we going to think. We got to be ready to stand. No matter what. We got to be ready to stand. Not think about the word loyalty. That's like a like an unheard word these days. I wonder how many high school students even know what the word loyalty means. I ain't indicting the high school kids now. I ain't doing that. But it seems like it's such an old-fashioned word. We don't even use that word no more. I was talking to uh, two gentlemen the other day, and they were talking about how they had been on their jobs for over 25, 30, 40 years. Loyal to the same boss. Can you imagine working for one boss for 40 years? You know his ins, his outs, his kids, his grandkids. You know everything about him. And not only that, he knows everything about you too. So don't be fooled. That's so unheard of. That is so unheard of. We got so many organizations, so many Jobs jumping up. They got Indeed on Facebook. They got this on Facebook. And all you got to do is put them set an alert. And you will know what, every job that's coming in your neighborhood without even going out to the street. Where's our loyalty at? Where's our loyalty? Where is it? Working for one boss for 40 years? Man, that's like your brother. That is like your brother. That's such a... So unheard of. So unheard of. But I think these stories teach us that we can be loyal. Even if it's old fashioned. We can be loyal. And that's what God loves. God loves loyalty. I think about families. We got husbands that want to leave. Wives that want. You know, it used to be a time when wives wouldn't leave. Wives would stick it, in, stick it out and let the husband leave. But not today. The husband will leave and leave her with the kids. But now we got wives that leave and leave him with the kids. <laughs> what happened to the loyalty? What happened to the loyalty to marriage, to relationship, to your own kids? What happened to that? We used to, no matter what happened, 
We wanted to stay with our kids and make sure that they grew up, made sure that we instilled in them what our parents instilled in us and what their parents instilled in them. That's loyalty. That is loyalty. Brothers and sisters used to stick together through thick and thin. I remember my mother used to tell me, all y'all got is each other. All you got is each other. No matter who you marry, no matter what kids you have, all you got is each other. Be loyal to your sisters and brothers. Oh, not today. We have brothers that cut sisters up, cut their throats, and say, you ain't my sister, get away from me. We got brothers that say that to other brothers. That don't happen no more. That don't happen no more. But we have to learn how to be loyal. We have to know what it means to be loyal. We have to know. We have to decide what has divided me. Where do I stand? Where do I go from here? What do I do? What am I going to risk my very life for? Like these men in battle. What am I going to risk my life for? Is it worth my life? Do we even think about that? Or do, are we just tossed to and fro? Every time something pop up, we run over here. Every time something pop over here, we run over there. Sisters and brothers, we need to know what loyalty means. And we need to be undivided in loyalty. We need to stick no matter what happens and see it to the end. We need to stick with it. Sometimes we are so impatient with some things and some people, some people, we gonna give you three chances and that's it, you out. That's it. But we need to understand what it means to stick. We need to understand what it means to be undivided. We need to understand what it means to be. No matter what the cause is. That's just, this is what I feel. This is what I'm going to stick with. This is what I'm going to stay with. We need to understand that. And our lives sometimes might even be on the very line for that. We have to understand that. So, David and his men. were bound and determined to make sure that the word of the Lord is carried out. And that's even another area. Do we even stick with churches when we found a pastor that we know has been sent by the Lord? And if you remember David's story, you know David wasn't perfect. David was not a perfect man, but he was a man after God's own heart. But do we stick with pastors that we know are after God's own heart, and we know that the Lord has set them up, and we know they have a word from the Lord? Are we obedient to them? Do we hear them? Do we do what they do? We do what they tell us to do. Because we know they've been sent by God. Or do we do this? Or do we just say, oh no, he, he ain't from God. I'm moving on to the next one. I'm moving on to the next one. No loyalty. None. None. I'm going to tell you this. I was so loyal to one of my pastors. When Harry Potter came out. She told the whole church, do not go see Harry Potter. And to this very day, I've never seen a Harry Potter movie. Never. Because I believed in her. I believed in the assignment that God had given her. I was loyal to her. I didn't care what my family said. I didn't care what my friends said. I didn't care what nobody said. My pastor had said, don't go do it. I did not do it. I did not do it. And I wasn't even embarrassed or ashamed. 
And I'm not even embarrassed or ashamed to this very day to say, I did not go. I did not go. I don't even know what Harry Potter is all about because I understood what loyalty meant. I understood what it meant. Even back then, because you know Harry Potter came out years ago. But I, I want us to understand that loyalty is important. Loyalty, you have to have loyalty when the cause is involved. I think about um, uh, the, the march that they just had, that they still haven't, that they still haven't, they ain't even ended. Some people been out there marching for nights after night after night after night about a cause because they want change. They want things to be different. They want people to know. They want people to hear their voices. They want people to see them. And I don't mean just see them. They want people to see them. So they decide, I ain't going home. I'm going to stay out here day after day after day after day until change comes. Until change is made. That's where we need to be. That's where Jesus wants to take us. Jesus wants us to be so loyal to the kingdom cause. He wants us to be loyal to the kingdom cause. That our very lives depend on it. And let me just bust your bubble. Your very life does depend on it. It really does. It does depend on it. Your very life depends on your loyalty to the Lord. We don't even know sometimes what to do. But if we just stick with it, if we just stay there, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, and let the Lord be your guide, be your leader, and touch your mind and give you what to do, you will be all right. I told my friend the other day, as long as you follow the Lord, you can never go wrong. As long as you follow the Lord, you can never go wrong. You can't follow me, because I might tell you something that just might be according to my feelings. That might be according to what I think. But as long as you follow the Lord, you will never go wrong. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will direct you. He will tell you how to go. He will tell you where to turn. He will tell you. know what? The Lord will even tell you what to say. Because there's many times I wanted to say some things, but I could hear the Holy Ghost telling me, don't say it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't say it. I almost have to clap my mouth shut to keep from saying some things that I want to say. But the Holy Ghost will guide me and tell me, don't do it. Don't say it. Because you know what? I've decided. I have decided that I'm going to be loyal to the Lord. Come what may, I'm going to be loyal to the Lord. I decided years ago that I was going to give my life to the Lord. Didn't nobody put a gun up to my head. Didn't nobody tell me what to do. Didn't nobody say, you better do this. I made that decision for myself. And when I made that decision, I said, okay, God, it's me and you. It's me and you. And the longer I have walked with the Lord, the more I have noticed that the Lord has brought me out of so many different things. So I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. I, when I'm confused about a situation, I don't make no moves. I say, okay, Lord, how am I going to move? What I'm going to say? What say you, Lord? What say you, Lord? Because I am loyal to the Lord. Do that mean I'm perfect? Oh, no. Far from perfect. Far from perfect. Do that mean I will make mistakes? Oh, no. I make mistakes too, just like everybody else. But I diligently get in the word of God. I diligently seek out the Lord. I diligently go back about what God has told me what to do and what not to do. That I am 
loyal to the Lord. And so I'm here to tell you on today that you can be loyal too. We all can be loyal. We don't have to be perfect. He don't require that we be perfect. He just requires that we have a made up mind. And when your mind is made up, you ain't tossed to and fro, double minded, unstable in all your ways. When your mind is made up, the Lord will lead you. The Lord will guide you. The Lord will direct you. Just like going back to 1 Chronicle, how the Lord had directed all these men. Can you imagine? Three, now, these are just the, the, the men that I counted from verse 23 through 40. 340,000 men standing at attention, waiting, because they believed in one man. They believed in David. They believed that the Lord had given him direction and instruction. They believed one man. And they gathered together and said, we're going to put our life on the line for this one man. Because God said it. Because God said it. Undivided loyalty. Think about it. I had to think about it. I had to think about what divided me. I had to start pulling off stuff, throwing stuff away, getting rid of stuff, taking stuff out of my life. Because I did not want to be divided. I wanted to be single-minded, single-hearted, following the leading of the Lord. So I just want to tell you on today it's possible. I'm going to tell you on today you can do it. I'm going to tell you on today you can let stuff go. I'm going to tell you on today you can let people go. I can tell you on today, you can even let feelings go. And you can ask God, how can I be loyal? What do I need to do to be loyal? Because I've made up my mind that I'm going to walk this walk. And I'm going to talk this talk. I just want to thank you very much. God bless you.